I'm David and this is CCN's Weekly News 5 at 5, November 12, 2021. And Central Coast COVID case numbers remain very low across the Central Coast, with this week's total just 26 cases, drastically down from approximately 200 a month ago. Double vaccination rates have climbed above 92% of the eligible population, yet some conscientious objectors are not happy about the no jo jab, no job mandates in some industries. About 1,200 protesters, including teachers, nurses and police, assembled at the entrance this week to voice their concern. CCN went along to follow the event. Tell me a little bit about the protest today. Um, we're fighting against um, mandated vaccines. We're fighting against forced um, unemployment because we won't take the vaccine. We're fighting for freedom of choice. GPs should be able to give informed consent to each individual patient to do what is best for that individual because we know for this vaccine they're leaky, they don't really work. Uh, there's marginal benefits in, in, uh, in home situations, but in the broader community, no, that's not true. I'm double vaccinated and wish I wasn't and I refuse to get any boosters. But if anyone is listening who's vaccinated, I respect your right to be vaccinated and your reasons to be vaccinated, but I also respect everyone's right to be not vaccinated and their personal reasons. At the end of the day, I view it as a medical experiment and I have been um, told to be silent as a teacher. I've been censored, I don't understand it all. Um, as far as I'm concerned, being an educated, intelligent person, you use critical thinking to any situation. And when it comes to this situation, I have been absolutely smashed by a lot of people for using critical thinking. Now, we teach that in schools. We also teach debating. That debating situation and topic has gone. Our, it's so biased, we can't have a voice. And I'm so proud of everybody today at the entrance for standing forward. Local state Labor MPs came together this week to highlight what they say is a watering down of TAFE standards by pushing centralised online learning into areas such as welding and metalwork. Here's what they had to say. During this government's tenure, we've seen Enrolments go down by over 120,000. We've seen over 5,000 teachers being sacked. We've seen our TAFE system being decimated. Now this is part of the model. They start shifting courses online. They've got much fewer teachers, much fewer students. Then the campus starts looking a little bit derelict and the buildings aren't being used and then they sell off the campuses. Uh, the Central Coast Council Administrator, Rick Hart, held an impassioned media conference this week to set the record straight about the history of the demise of the council's finances. Here's a little what if he had to say. As I've said, the misinformation that's out there is causing immense damage to this organisation. We're in a situation now where we've had ads out running for quite senior managerial roles here. We have not had one response. We can't recruit. People are leaving or because the threat is there that we're going to have to cut costs, which means a further 200 odd staff probably having to go. I said right from day one to IPART and to all this, I need certainty. No commercial entity that goes through a receivership suffers this. I can't get appointments with ministers or senior people in the state government. I represent now 350,000 people, I'm the only representative. Delta Electricity, the owners of Vales Point Power Station, have come out and criticised community environmental groups who are concerned with the power station's application to the EPA to extend an exemption to air pollution rules. Delta Electricity spokesperson Steve Gurney said this is a collection of anti-coal activists with one objective, to shut down coal-fired power stations. Hmm. Read all about it in this week's papers. And the Central Coast Mariners have promoted another long-serving local academy player into the ranks of their first team, this time signing 18-year-old Jacob Farrell. A Mariners debut now beckons for Farrell, potentially in the upcoming FFA knockout fixture against Blacktown FC on tomorrow, Saturday, November 13. And of course, as always, all of these stories and thousands more can be found on our website without a paywall for locals or in this week's print editions of Coast Community News, the Coast Community Chronicle and the Pelican Post. 
Remember, of course, to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Spotify and Instagram pages for updates throughout the week. And keep an eye out for our daily video updates. And to close this week, we leave you with vision of Thursday's Remembrance Day ceremony held in Gosford. See you next week and have a great weekend.